Do you feel ignorant because you don't know numbers? You don't know which one go which way and they got all these marks and things on them? I know, honey, it's hard. But there is a solution. Fort Bend tutoring. And now here go Mr. Whit. Explain math to us, Mr. Whit. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Whit with Fort Bend tutoring. And today's lesson is going to be about adding fractions. So let's check it out. We have problem number one. Anytime you're trying to add or subtract fractions, you must have the lowest common denominator. You must have a common denominator in order to add or subtract fractions. All right, that's the bottom line. We have a video on finding the least common denominator that can help you out. So check that out, ladies and gentlemen. But we don't even have to worry about that in problem number one. Why? Because both of these denominators are already the same. They're both 18. So remember, anytime you want to add or subtract fractions, you must have a common denominator. And in this problem, we do have common denominators. So let's go ahead and solve it. All you have to do once recognizing that you have a common denominator is add the numerators together. So 2 plus 7 is going to give me 9 over that common denominator of 18. The denominator stays the same, which means that you add the numerators together. 2 plus 7 is 9. And the denominator will stay the same. Once you've done that, you then must always simplify your fractions. That's right. Write it in its lowest terms. Reduce the fractions. If you want to check that out as well, we have a video on simplifying fractions. So check that out. I got a link at the bottom of the screen right now as I speak. You see it there? There it is. All right. So reducing this, both 9 and 18 can be simplified by 9. So I'm going to divide the numerator by 9 and I'm gonna divide the denominator by 9, and 9 divided by 9 is 1, 18 divided by 9 is 2, and that's my answer, 1 half. Okay? So not only are you responsible for making sure, ensuring that the denominators are the same so that you can add them, but once you have your answer, make sure that it's always written in its lowest form, in its reduced form. All right, so that's problem number one. Let's move on. Problem number two, here we are. In problem number two, I have one half plus one third. Here, we do not have a common denominator. So the first number that two and three can go into evenly is going to be six. Remember, when finding the lowest common denominator, you're always looking for either the largest number that you have available now. For instance, three would be the largest number. But since two doesn't go into three evenly, you can't use it. Or a multiple of the largest number that they can both go into evenly. So a multiple of three, three times two is six, and two can go into six evenly. So we'll use 6 as the common denominator, the lowest common denominator, the LCD. So I'm going to rewrite this problem. Yep. And I'm going to set up my framework here with denominators of 6. That's right. Now, in order to continue working this problem, I need to ensure, I need to make sure that the fractions are equivalent to their original form. In other words, since I'm rewriting one half with a denominator of six, I need to make sure that the numerator is proportional, that the fraction will have the exact same value with a denominator of six as it had with a denominator of two. The way we do that is we'll multiply by one. Two was multiplied by what to get six? That's right. It was multiplied by 3. So since I multiplied the denominator by 3, I'll need to also multiply the numerator by 3. See, this is that form of 1 that I was referring to. 3 over 3 is 1. So 2 was multiplied by 3 to get 6. So 1 times 3 is 3. And this process is called finding an equivalent fraction. It's a very, very important part of adding and subtracting fractions. All right. 3 was multiplied how many times to get 6? That's right. It was multiplied 2 times. So 1 times 2 is... Two, exactly. Now that we have equivalent fractions with common denominators, we can add the numerators together. So three plus two gives me five over my common denominator of six, and this is my answer. That's it, done and done. You got it. Let's keep it moving, ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep it moving. All right, so problem number three, I have two fifths plus one fourth. The first number that five and four would have in common would be 20. 20. That's it. So I'm going to set up my framework here with denominators of 20. You got it. All right. So 5 was multiplied how many times in order to get 20? That's right. Four times. So 2 times 4 is going to give me 8. Mm -hmm. 4 was multiplied 5 times to get 20. So 1 times 5 is 5. And then adding the numerators together, I have 8 plus 5, which is always 13, over that common denominator of 20. And also make sure that you cannot reduce the fraction any further. In this case, I can't. 
So this is my answer, 13 twentieths. That's it. All right, let's keep it moving. Keep working here. Problem number four. I have three eighths plus one six. The first number that eight and six can go into evenly is not eight, but a multiple of eight. That common denominator that we'll need, it's 24. That's right. Eight times three is 24, and six times four is 24. So we'll use 24 as the LCD, the lowest common denominator for both of these fractions. And then, remember, we must get equivalent fractions. So eight was multiplied three times to get 24. Three was multiplied three times, and that gives us a new numerator of nine. Six was multiplied four times, so I need to multiply one times four, and that gives me four. Now that I have my equivalent fractions with common denominators, you add the numerators together, and 9 plus 4 is going to always be 13 over our denominator of 24, and that gives me my answer. That's it. Check me out. I'm red boxing it, man. Do you see that? Put a red box around that answer. All right. Problem number five. Problem number five. I have seven twelfths plus two ninths. In this problem, I'm once again given two denominators that are different. So I'll need to find the lowest common denominator. So looking at 12 and 9, the first number that they can go into evenly will be 36. So I'm going to use 36 as my LCD in both problems here. 12 was multiplied three times to get 36. So 7 times 3 is 21. 9 was multiplied 4 times, so 2 times 4 gives me 8. Now that I have this, I'm looking at 21 plus 8, which gives me a result of 29 over 36, and this is my answer. That's it. All right? 29 and 36 cannot be simplified any further. So that's my result. Done and done. All right, moving on to the next problem here. Problem number six, I have 5 21st plus 3 14 The first number that 21 and 14 can go into evenly, you guessed it, is going to be 42. All right, did you guess it? Because I'm thinking that some of you may not have guessed it, and you, you don't, don't lie to me. That's, that's unnecessary, okay? So 21 was multiplied how many times to get 42? Yeah, twice. Yeah, so I'll multiply 5 times 2, and that's going to give me 10. 14 goes into 42 three times, so 3 times 3 gives me a result of 9. Once I have this, I simply add the numerators together. 10 plus 9 gives me 19, and that's going to be over my denominator of 42 and done. That's it. All right, so that does it. Got a red box around my answer, 19 over 42. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for this lesson of adding fractions. This is Mr. Witt. Larry Whittington with Fort Bend Tutoring. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're able, please donate. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? You could do all that on tutormemouth.net.